Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Today, I think this is going to be a cool test. What I want to do is I want to take the Class D amplifier, not this one. Now this one does have the TDA 8954 chips on it, just like this one does. It has two of them on there, just like this guy. This one's a little bit more compact board. We're going to test this one on another video. But the one down here, I've got hooked up to a crossover. It's a two-way crossover. So what I want to do is show you the interactions. Like, let's see if the crossover helps filter out some of the spikes or some of the noise that we might get in, the, in this particular Class D amplifier, okay? And see if it cleans things up. So I thought that'd be a cool test. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, what I'm going to do, I started off using the GW, but I have four channels, so I could, I could look at uh, the three channels I want to look at, but I have to go one at a time. And then you have to, you know, anyway, I pulled out the Pico because of the Pico, you can look at all three at the same time. And what the three are is one is the output of the amplifier. The other one is the output of the woofer on the two-way crossover. And the third one will be the tweeter output. So this two-way crossover has a, a woofer and a tweeter output, they call it. And just in case you guys, you know, some of you guys aren't familiar with what crossovers do, in every speaker that you have different sizes of speakers, uh, you send some of those frequencies to the tweeter, some of the frequencies to the woofer, and some to the mid-range if you have a three-way. This is a two-way, so it has a crossover right around four or five kilohertz. So right around four and five kilohertz to say 20 kilohertz, all those high frequencies go to the tweeter output. And from right around that four kilohertz, five kilohertz down to say 20 hertz, the low frequencies all go to the woofer, okay? So what we're going to be able to see when I change the frequency using this unity is when I'm at low frequencies, we should see that spike. We should see the spike traveling across the spectrum uh, of the amplitude that I'm sending into it. So if I start, say, at 100 hertz, we'll see a spike at 100 hertz. We'll go 500 hertz, 1 kilohertz. And then around 5 kilohertz, that spike will start dropping on the woofer output. But on the tweeter, we'll see that spike come up, and then we'll see it transfer over, okay? But now what about the harmonics? So that's what I'm really interested in. Does the filter, the crossover, help filter out some of those spurs? We call them spurs. Like let's say you got that one kilohertz signal coming in and you see those harmonics. Those are like spurs, right? They're, they're things you don't want there. So I'm kind of wondering, and that's what led me to this test, is hey, what happens when we put an actual speaker on it? Now we're still using eight ohms, you know, for the speaker test. Uh, yeah, I could use a speaker, and maybe I should. Maybe you guys can su suggest some drivers that I could use. But the drivers are going to change for everybody, right? My speakers sound different than yours. But it would be a good second test to do. The first test would be a speaker just showing, okay, ideally with eight ohms crossover, this is what you get. And then that way... Uh, we could test different crossovers with different amps to see the behavior, interaction, see if there is some interaction. Does it just simply filter and do what, it's, what you think it's going to do? Or is there some other interaction going on that is not ideal? Or maybe, I don't know, maybe it does some cool stuff. One thing I'm hoping it does is it helps smooth off some of that noise, some of those spurs helps filter some of those things out. So that's what kind of led me to this test. And I want to see what happens. Hey, by the way, the other thing is, you know, all amplifiers, Class A, AB, linear type amplifiers, they have filters on the output, LC, LCR filters. And those filters help stabilize the amplifier with different loads. Like is the speakers changing impedance with different frequencies? It helps to when the amplifier is seeing what impedance it's sending the signal out to, help stabilize that by giving that filter that kind of, you know, connects between the amplifier and the speaker. Well, but then what happens with the crossover? Now you got another crossover. How does that interact with all that? Now, with linear amplifiers, it might be better understood. I don't know. I want to test that. But with Class Ds, I'm really curious to see if that might not even be a, a more important interaction because of the switching behavior and those edges and the noise and the spurs 
Now, not all Class Ds put out that kind of noise. I've got other Class D amps I've tested that I didn't see all those spikes and that. And, and I'm not sure. Anyway, let's take a look. Let's bring the camera over, jump into this, and let's take a look at these three signals, the input, the tweeter, and the woofer, all at the same time. And let's just see what happens. This should be easy and fun, okay? All right, let's do it. Okay guys, we're set up, we're ready to go. I'm gonna fire up the power supply. I've got the scope hooked up. Uh, the output of the amplifier's blue, the red is a woofer, and the tweeter's the green, okay? And it's 100 hertz, 352 millivolts. It's, okay, and it's gonna put out 50 watts steady state, okay? Okay, crank it up, it's running. It's pulling about 1.2 amps per channel. And there we go, that's what it looks like. We don't see anything on the green one because the tweeter is not really getting any 100 hertz signal. Imagine that. Okay, now let's go ahead and I'm just going to run through the frequency real fast so you can see what that looks like. Actually, you know what? Let's just jump over the spectrum. I've got this set up so that you can see the signals on the right and the spectrum on the left. Okay, and it's 20 kilohertz bandwidth. You can see the frequencies across the bottom, right? Okay, so here we go. We're going to start increasing the frequency. And then we'll zoom in on the spectrum to get a better look because those windows are kind of small right now. Now you can see the frequencies getting... I'm not going to spread them out. I'm not going to take the time. You can just kind of see the amplitude, okay? There's three, four. I'm going to kind of go fast. I have to slow down a little bit just so you can see the... Uh, yeah, you know what, I'm going to go fast and then I'm going to get rid of the signals on the right and then we'll just look at the spectrums. The reason I'm going fast is this crossover actually heats up. Okay, we're at one, that's one kilohertz. You can hear the crossover, right? Two. Now you can see the green one's starting to get big, the red one's starting to shrink a little bit. Yep, it's starting to shrink, right? Cool. So, 5 kilohertz. They're almost even. The woofer's still... Okay, there's 6 kilohertz. The tweeter's got more. Okay, so you can kind of see how the, the blue gets transferred to the green and the red gets smaller. Now we're at 16 kilohertz. And you can see that spike going across the screen, right? 17... 18, you have to slow down a little bit, let the math catch up. Okay, there's 20K. Okay, I'm gonna drop it back down to low frequencies because the crossover likes that better. Okay, we're at one kilohertz. Okay, now I'm gonna get rid of these windows on the right, okay? You know what I'm gonna do? Pull this over here and hide it that way. So it's still there, but we'll look at the spectrums. And here, let me get these. There we go. Now we're nice and spread out. All right, so. Okay, I got an extra view there for some reason, but there we go. Okay, here. I'm going to move this over here until we get to the high frequencies. So what I've got set up here, let me explain this real fast. Whoops, let me move all those over. Okay, see this marker right here? That's set up for uh, 5 ki kil... Well, yeah, I'm going to set up for 5 kilohertz. Well, I guess I didn't have it set up. Oh, the one up above is set... Okay. I'm going to put it right off of that spike. So there's 5K. See this one right here? Let me pull this one out. We'll put that right around. So there's the crossover point right about there. And I've got this one out here for some reason. Okay, we'll leave it there. Now, see this right here? I'm going to put it right at the top of that blue waveform. That's the... Right now, that's 1 kilohertz. And I'll put the green one right where it is right now. And see the woofer? Oh, I've got the woofer down here now. Oh, look. I've got Windows 2 and 3 kind of mixed up. 
All right, sorry, tweeters up here, woofers down here at the bottom. So, yeah, see that? Now here's the thing that surprised me. Look at all these spikes on the woofer. I would think after the crossover that it would filter out all that, but if you look up the original signal up here, the blue one, it looks like it's even amplified some of them maybe. I mean, I don't know. It looks like they're even bigger to me, but yeah, that doesn't look great, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna drop the frequency. Let's go back down again. Let's see what it looks like. Here, let's jump down to 100 hertz. If I go down too low, you can't even see it, but okay, look, there's 100 hertz. Look at this noise right here. There's a bunch of noise. Now, look at the tweeter. The tweeter, I would think that it's passing high frequencies. Why is it sending these low frequencies through? So, now, I, I would understand that they're a little bit lower than the blue one up here, but not much, right? And look at the woofer down here. It doesn't, it, the noise looks different, right? It's kind of spread out. So it's kind of changed the spectrum. That's why I wanted to point out. It looks different to me. Okay, let's go 200 hertz. Just keep an eye on that. Look how this one spread out. And there's a little bit cluster there. They're kind of getting spread out a little bit, right? But yeah, okay. So here, I'll just go ahead and bring it up again. There's 300. All right, so yeah, the red one is kind of spread out and drops down. It kind of looks like the blue one, but it looks like it even creates a little bit of noise, maybe. Okay, there's 400 hertz. Now the green one looks pretty clean out here at the high frequencies, but it is passing these low frequencies through the filter, which is surprising to me a little bit. Okay, there's 400. All right. See how tall the red signal is to the blue? That's the main signal, but and this other stuff just spurs the noise. So, I mean, the original signal doesn't look great, but the the woofer one looks even worse. Okay, there's 600, seven. I'll pause just long enough for the math to catch up on the spectrum, and for you to take a look at it. Okay, there's 800. All right, guys, so uh, there's 900 hertz. 1,000. You can see the spike crossing, right? Okay. Oh, that's 1,100. Let's go to 2,000. And listen to that uh, crossover's really singing. There's 3K. Now, I'm just surprised on the red waveform how many spikes there are at the high frequencies. Okay, there's 4 kilohertz. It's starting to cross over. You see the green waveform going up. There's 5. Okay, I, have, I can't go too slow because that crossover is going to start heating up. There's six, yeah. Anyway, just mind the red waveform at the bottom. I mean, one thing, okay, right there, that, I don't know. Okay, there's 10K, and there's 20K. So I'll go back down to, uh, let, let me go down to 19. You see the spike? There's 18. 17 Okay Here let me get rid of these windows I guess I could just turn them off Okay, yeah, I smell things getting hot 14 Now right there, the blue waveform looks like it has more spikes than the other waveform, or the red one. The red one looks pretty clean. So it does look like the sub, except for there is a frequency down around 4 kilohertz, right? Okay, there's 9K. 10, 7K. Let's 
six. All right, we're getting back to 1K. All right, I'm gonna turn down the power. Here, we'll, we'll freeze that so you can lock that in. Lock that guy in. Whew. All right, so what do you guys think of that? Um, man, I, I'm just a little surprised that some of the frequencies that are able to sneak through the crossover. I expected it to look different. I expected the woofer to actually filter out uh, the high frequencies. And, and I thought, you know, once I started doing this test, I thought, man, the tweeter, it's going to see some of those high frequency uh, harmonics even when the frequency that we're injecting is in the range of the woofer. And I thought, God, that's probably not an ideal thing, but maybe the filter uh, filters them out. And so one thing that's made me think about is that with a Class D amp, it might be beneficial to have a filter, like a stop filter, like a filter at the high frequencies to take that away from the tweeter so it doesn't see frequencies above, say, 20 or 30 or 40 kilohertz, you know? I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, one thing I'm sure you're thinking is this Class D amp looks kind of noisy, doesn't it? So I don't know if, yeah, I'm not sure what it is. I think I, I need to look that the inductors are using and the capacitors to see what combination, if they got the right combination. Got to look into that a little bit. But this crossover, uh, I think the next video, I'll have a schematic in microcap and so we can simulate it. Um, and yeah, we'll take a look at it and, and just see how it should behave ideally. And then I'll talk about why maybe it doesn't act ideal, okay? And also why it's getting hot. It's rated for 150 watts, uh, you know, continuous, 300 watts peak. And when I put, man, that plastic box is kind of, well, I'll show you the next video. It's kind of, it's not the same shape it started. <laughs> it's not awful, but it's, yeah, it's kind of changed shape a little bit. But I've only run it for, you know, minutes, uh, maybe tens of minutes. But anyway, all right, guys, hey, thumbs up to my patrons. Really appreciate you guys. And thumbs up to all you guys for watching videos, commenting, all that stuff. And I hope you like this. I hope you found that interesting, connecting a crossover to the amplifier to actually see the interactions. And what I should have done is also showed the amplifier going straight into the resistors as kind of a starting spot, right? And then put the crossover in. So next time I'll do that. Uh, but we did see that in the previous videos. But yeah, I should do a before and after, right? And because... One thing about a filter, once you inject a filter, once you attach a filter to the output, even though you're, what you want is it to change what happens downstream, like at the tweeter or the woofer output, just the fact of dropping a filter onto a power supply output or an amplifier output, it will change the characteristics of the output a little bit because there's a thing called insertion loss. Uh, and you can imagine there's a loading effect on the amplifier or on the power supply. So just by the fact of the mere fact of putting a filter into the circuit, you're causing a loading effect, which is what they refer to as an insertion loss. Inserting a filter causes losses, uh, hopefully in a good way. But anyway, so hope you guys like that. Let me know what you think down below. And thumbs up the video if you like it. It really helps YouTube analytics, helps the video and all that stuff. Free way to help the channel by the way and all right guys uh links to this amplifier below if you like it <laughs> the, the uh, crossover as well but i've done videos on the crossover before and it performed well at the one watt thing you know when you do the body plot all that stuff looked good uh looked pretty good so but wow running uh power through it and uh Anyway, I'm going to have to try Class A, B amp, Class A amp, try different amps into these things and just see the different uh, behavior patterns with the different types of amplifiers. And even within the same classification of an amplifier, 
just testing you know that class D compared to this one same chip maybe they did a better job a different job of how they put the filters it definitely has different types of inductors on it different types of capacitors so yeah who knows we'll have to try that out too all right okay hey thanks for watching guys uh we'll see you next time all right guys i did want to show you one thing here let me turn this off too i did want to show you something here uh here let's go to a higher frequency let's go to one meg i want to show you the switching frequency of this thing yeah there we go look at that see these little bursts out here that's the switching frequency so if i grab this guy right here move it over oops right there see 680 and because we have two of them together i think there's a beep frequency that causes us extra higher noise out here so yeah that is two amplifiers running together out here and over here is the amplifier so i just want to show you that switching noise and where the frequencies are and you can see